Hello again, guys. It's Mr. Zigner. We're looking at Lesson 5-5, Multiplying Fractions and Mixed Numbers. All right, you can see we're going to multiply fractions. We're going to try to simplify before multiplying our fractions. We'll be multiplying mixed numbers, and then we'll wrap things up with a real-world example. All right, let's get rolling. So here's our concept. The whole concept behind multiplying fractions we just merely multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. You can see here with one-third times two-fifths, you're going to merely do one times two on top, three times five on the bottom, and in this case we end up with two-fifteenths. One thing to watch out for, of course, is to make sure you have simplified your final answer. All right, let's try some out. Well, here's an example they set up for us. And I, I kept this one to show you because I really like the graphic over there at the bottom left. The problem is 1 8 times 1 9. Well, just to solve this problem, we do 1 times 1 on top, 8 times 9 on the bottom, and well, 1 times 1 is 1, and 8 times 9 is 72. And you'd think we're all done. We're all done there, and that's fine. It's just nice to see this graphic over here on the left because it kind of shows you why it's one over seventy-two. Do you understand the graphic? Let me show it to you. Well, first of all, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns. So as you can see, this first column is shaded in because it's one of the eight columns. All right. And now going the other way, you can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows. And this top row is shaded in. That's showing one ninth. Okay, you got an idea of the graphic? Okay. So we have one eight times one ninth. Well, right where these two, well, not two, this row and this column intersect is right here. This is the only overlapping point. And that little square is one of the 72 squares that make up the whole grid. And that sort of shows you why 1 8 times 1 9 is 1 over 72, 1 72nd. All right, let's try some out. Here we have 1 5th times 1 7th. So literally, we just set that up multiply our numerators together. 1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 7 is 35. I don't think that can be simplified. So, yep, there it is. All done with our first one. Off to an easy start. Now 12 times 1 sixth. Oh, they're starting to raise the difficulty level. No big deal. We can handle this. So we have 12 times 1 sixth. Well, the, the first problem you're probably you're noticing is the, the 12 is in a fraction. But any whole number here can be made into a fraction, and we've talked about this before, by putting it over 1. See what I mean? 12 equals 12 over 1. Fractions are division problems. 12 divided by 1, well, that is 12. Okay, well, with that being said, let's charge into this problem. The first way to solve it is just multiply our numerators together. So 12 times 1 is 12, and 1 times 6 is 6. Now that's an improper fraction, of course. Uh, 12 divided by 6, however, is 2. So there's our answer, 2. But before we leave this problem, let me show you one more way that we could have done this. If I reset up that 12 over 1, times are 1 over 6. We can actually divide out diagonally common factors. Now what I mean by that is, take a look. I've got this 12 right here. I'm going to cross it out. And this 6 right here. What can you divide into 12 and 6? Well, there's a couple of choices. 2, 3, 6. Well, 6 is the GCF. 6 is the biggest number that goes into both of those. So let's divide each number by 6. So 6 divided by 6 down here is 1. And 12 divided by 6 up here at the top left is 2. So if you divide diagonally each of those numbers by the same amount, 
you're actually allowed to simplify the problem instead of simplifying the final answer. Now watch what we end up with as our final answer. It should be the same as the first problem. So now I have 2 times 1 on top, that's 2, and 1 times 1 on the bottom, that's 1, and here we go, 2 divided by 1, we're back to our original answer of 2. So that's two interesting ways to solve a problem when you have numbers you can actually divide out and work with smaller numbers. Sometimes it's easier than multiplying really large numbers, so watch out for that. Here we have 4 ninths times 6 sevenths. Let me set that up real quick. 4 ninths times 6 sevenths. Now, can either fraction be simplified before we start working on it? Uh, 4 ninths, nope. 6 sevenths, nope. But what about diagonally? 4 and 7 don't have any common factors. What about 9 and 6 diagonally? Oh, yeah, sure. We can divide 9 and 6 each by 3. Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. All right, now we have some slightly easier numbers to work with. Let's multiply our numerators together. That would be 4 times 2, which is 8, and 3 times 7, which is 21. Can 8 over 21 be simplified? Nope, no common factors, so we're all done. Now we have 1 sixth times 4 and 6 ninths. Oh, I see what they're making us do now. Now we have a fraction times a mixed number. Well, as I see it, there's really two ways to proceed. Let me show you one method. I'm going to move this over a little bit for ourselves. Maybe way up here. I'm going to show you two different ways to solve this. First is making that mixed number improper. So, improper. Here we go. So, we're going to keep that 1 sixth, but now we're going to turn 4 and 6 ninths into an improper fraction. So, let's see. How you, do you remember how to do that? You do 9 times 4, and 9 times 4 is 9, 18, 27, 36, and then 36 plus 6. Well, 36 plus 6 would be 42. So that would be 42 over the original denominator. So you keep that 9. 42 over 9. Okay. Oh, now I'm seeing things we can uh, divide out with common factors. Here, 6 and 42. You can divide them both by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1, and 42 divided by 6 is 7. Now we simply have to multiply right across 1 times our 7 is, of course, 7, and 1 times our 9 is 9, and 7 ninths cannot be simplified. So there's our answer, B. All right, now that second way. Here's the second way to solve it. We can actually break the 4 and 6 ninths into 4, and then a separate fraction of 6 ninths. Here's what I mean. Let me draw a little line to separate these. So first I'm going to do 1 sixth times the 4, and plus I'm going to do the 1 sixth times the 6 ninths. So I'm actually breaking that into two separate problems. All right, well the first one would be, uh, well, 4, I'm going to rewrite that as 4 over 1. Now we multiply our numerators together. Let's see, 1 times 4 is 4. 6 times 1 is 6. So I've got 4 sixths. Plus over here, 1 times... Oh, wait, you know what? We could actually do some factoring here. We can factor out a 6 here, divide each of those by 6, and that becomes a 1, and this becomes a 1. All right. So now we multiply tops together. 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 9 on the bottom is 9. So really, I have 4 6 plus 1 ninth. Well, we don't have common denominators, but let's see here. If I rewrite 4 6 as 2 thirds plus this 1 ninth, now let's see here. What would be my LCD? I guess that would be 9. So if we actually now make this 2 thirds into ninths, 
Let's see, what would I multiply that by? I guess uh, three thirds. So that three times two is six. So two thirds equals six ninths, plus this one ninth. And there we go. We're at our seven ninths. All right, so there's another way of handling it. I personally really like, and you can probably guess this, this first way over here. Simply make that mixed number into an improper fraction. Do any canceling out of common factors, and then just multiply across and simplify. Now we have our little, little word problem here. Uh, Bob has 108 decorative stones he purchased to build a walkway. When the walkway is complete, Bob has used 7 ninths of the stones. A little more than half. So find the number of stones Bob used. Oh, okay. So we need to do 108 times our 7 ninths. Because we need 7 ninths of, see that of there? I think I mentioned this in another video recently. Of always means to multiply. So we need 7 ninths of the stones. Well, how many stones were there? Right here, 108. There are 108 stones. So we need to do 108 times 7 ninths. Okay, well, let's see here. Well, 108 could be 108 over 1. Do we see any dividing out common factors? I do. Here, 9 happens to go into 108. Well, 9 divided by 9 is 1. And you know what 108 divided by 9 is? Turns out it's 12. And let me show you. 12 times 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So there it is. It actually is 12. Okay, now let's just finish things up by multiplying our numerators together and our denominators together. So we have 12 times 12 times our 7 on top, and 12 times 7 is 84. 1 times 1 on the bottom is 1. Oh, and that's an easy finish. 84 divided by 1 is, of course, 84. So he used 84 of those stones, and uh, there it is. Answer choice C is our number of stones used to make this walkway. Hey, we made it to the end of another video. We're at about 12 and a half minutes. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, please, students, complete your questions below this video on my website, and we'll catch up soon. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me as we work our way through the 7th grade Math Connects textbook. Feel free to email me with any questions. My website is www.mattzigner.com. On my site, you'll find links to my math blog, some of my favorite educational sites, and lots of helpful information for students, parents, and teachers. See you next time.